Yo, I am seeing BJJ schools practically everywhere. Yeah, MMA has truly been good to that style. Yeah, it's basically like a household name at this point, which, I mean, makes this next question really awkward. I'm listening? So I don't actually know what BJJ really is. Actually, that makes sense. Everybody kind of assumes you already know what it is, but no one ever really explains what it is all that often. Care to help with that? Yeah, let's get into it. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a super row hat and welcome to the Modern Ninja YouTube channel. The only channel about all things martial arts all the time. Well, martial arts and nerd culture because I'm kind of a nerd if you couldn't tell. I'm literally wearing a green arrow hat. But today we're going over one of the most popular martial arts in America, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Chances are that if you randomly picked out any ground fighting martial arts school, you will probably find a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school. They are everywhere. So I thought it's time to cover some of the history and background of that style. So that the next time you walk into a school wondering if it's for you or not, you know exactly what to expect. Well, mostly what to expect, considering I don't train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so most of this is just research and from friends. But Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or BJJ, is a martial art and combat sport based on ground fighting and submission hold, focusing on the skill of taking the opponent to the ground, controlling them, and gaining the high ground, and submitting them by joint locks or chokes or other various means. BJJ employs a wide range of takedown techniques to bring an opponent down to whatever level they want them to be at. And some are pretty unique to that style, like the pulling guard. It's a transition directly from standing to the guard position. Basically, it's a way to skip straight to the groundwork instead of wasting a ton of energy fighting them on the way to the ground. Once they get their enemy to the ground, there are several maneuvers to manipulate them into exactly the position you want them to be in. Side control, knee on the stomach, full mount, back mount, and any of the many, many guards. And once they have gotten their target exactly where they want them, they submit them basically either making them tap out or breaking their arms, legs, and even passing out in a variety of different ways. Now, compression locks are the least common type of submission. It's where the muscles of an enemy is compressed against a large bone on the practitioner, like the shin, forearms, or wrist, causing significant pain. This can actually lead to tearing muscle tissue, hyperextensions of the arm, and in extreme cases, breaks. Now joint locks are a little more obvious, basically locking up a joint like a shoulder, elbow, hip, or knee. And when playing nice, this can cause a significant amount of pain that will, you know, cause them to tap out and give up. But when playing not so nice, well, the limbs just tend to break, like I said. Breaking is is half the fun. Well, I mean at least it is if they're actually trying to hurt you Some very famous examples of these techniques include arm bars heel hooks and omoplatas And lastly chokes are always fun typically applied by putting pressure on the carotid arteries It's the one that is responsible for bringing blood and oxygen to the brain So it's kind of important and a great example of these kind of chokes is the rear naked choke. I'm sure all of you have heard of this at some point or another. It is literally world famous for how fast it works. And in fact, if you don't know how to like defend from it, you're pretty screwed because it can take effect in less than five seconds, which is such a short amount of time in real life. And holding it after the opponent has passed out can cause serious brain damage or even death because, you know, your brain kind of needs oxygen. For a style that is so effective and so popular, common regular knowledge would make you think that it's actually an incredibly old martial art. But in reality, BJJ is actually one of the more recent styles to emerge, created just before World War II around 1920s. But it has since grown in popularity in part by its prominence in MMA. As the UFC became a household name, so did BJJ. 
And in all likelihood, it will probably continue to be one of the world's most famous martial arts forms of all time. Now, of course, there's a lot more I could go into about this style. It has a very rich history and ingrained in our culture with how widespread it is. But if you want me to go more in depth about that, just, you know, let me know for if you like a part two. And while you're commenting you'd like a part two, maybe, you know, subscribe or even hit the bell so you don't miss when that happens. And if you're into it, check out my Patreon where I do shout outs and other perks. It's just getting started. So if you want to help support me in that way, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. I really can't talk guys. But that way I can hire more editors, make more content and make better quality content for you guys. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja and I'm out. If you like this video, check out this one about Muay Thai or this other one about Drunken Fist. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one.